Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're getting our final review of Painkiller by Judas Priest. Okay, so after a week of TV Fish listening to this album, I wanna know what your thoughts are after a week. All right, so there's one thing I wanna say right off the bat, and this is related to something I said last week. Okay. If you recall my comments on Nightcrawler, I said, you know, the song was good. I wasn't like super huge on it, but I, I could see that the seeds were planted of something great. Right. I felt to myself, like, you know what, I really think this is gonna grow on me. Yeah, you said it could grow on you, yeah. It did not take long for the song to do that. Nice. It was around like, I wanna say Monday, Tuesday at the latest that I was listening to the song and I'm like, this is fucking amazing. I love this song. I love the groove in the song. I love just how mean it sounds. Riffs. And, you know, I, I mentioned, oh, you know, the quiet part doesn't build up too much, but, you know, when I was listening to it, that, over the week, that really wasn't an issue for me anymore. Like, I, you know, that didn't really bother me at all. So I thought that song was sick. And one thing about that song is that my favorite stretch on the album, not considering the title track, because like I said, the title track is a perfect song. That, that's still God-tier song. But outside of that, my favorite stretch on the album is from Nightcrawler through A Touch of Evil. Those three songs, Nightcrawler, Between the Hammer and the Anvil, and Touch of Evil, all three of them shot up greatly in terms of like what songs I was really digging on this album. Nice. Between the Hammer and the Anvil, I love the hammer smashes during the bridge. Yeah. That's sick, and I love that that riff is how the song starts mm -hmm. and how the song ends as well. That's super cool. Um, I love the vocals at the end, and I love how in the chorus you hear the high vocal uh, well, no, it's a different song where that happens, but um, still though at the end of that song there's lots of cool eye vocals where there it is, yeah. says the name of the song. What I was mentioning though was in A Touch of Evil, there's one part where Rob Halford says, you're persisting me. And you, anyone who's heard this album knows what part I'm talking about. Every single time it happens, I'm just, yes, I love that part. Did you look up those lyrics? Is he not saying you're persisting me? I always thought he said you're possessing me. It might be. I didn't look up the lyrics. I think he says you're possessing You're possessing me. That makes more sense. Either way. It's either way. sick when he does that, but I know the part you're talking about. Yeah. And I love that part. Exactly. It's my favorite part of that whole song. And not only that, but right after that, there's a high vocal harmony in the chorus that wasn't present before. And that's fucking cool. I love yeah. that. Now, it was brought to our attention that Living Bad Dreams is actually not on the original track listing for the That's, album. That surprised me. Yeah, one of you guys, one of our viewers let us know. Um, it's been on every version I've ever heard of this album, but it, apparently it's a, a bonus track. And I looked it up and that's true. It actually is not actually a song on the album. Yeah, it was included on the remaster. Um, now, although we do not include bonus tracks or bonus material on the channel, I do want to comment on the song because I did mention it last week and I, I was like, you know, it doesn't really feel super right if you have, you know, a kind of emotional song like A Touch of Evil and then again. Yeah. But before I took it out of the rotation, I was honestly liking it way more. And I'm thinking to myself, like, this is an amazing ending to this album. I love that song. Like, I think like, it's a cool. fantastic ending. Like, yeah. I, it really grew on me a lot. And I just wanted to mention that, even though I'm not considering that part of the review. Yeah. However, the, tr the true ending of the album one Shot at Glory, I still think is an effective ending. Totally. Especially because it starts with the track before Battle Him. No other track has any interlude or anything, so it's really building up to something big and great, and that yeah. is One Shot at Glory, which does pay off. Like, you, th you think of that song, and that's the epic finale to the album. And I think it's really effective that way. I agree, and I think One Shot at Glory also has some of the vocal highlights of this album. Like, the vocals on the whole album are great, but that song specifically for me has, like, some of the best, um, like he's just hitting these notes that almost sound humanly impossible. They're just like, I was like, we were listening to it last week and I was like, who hits notes like that? Like that's just <laughs> insane. And there's a couple parts where he does stuff like that and I love it. The gallop beat helps that song sound different, also helps it give it some, this um, forward moving kind of epic battle type of vibe to it. Really love that song, one of my top favorites on the album for sure. Every time I hear, let me hear the battle cry, I just, yeah, yeah that's sick. Just Oh, it feels good every time I hear that. Let me talk about Battle Him for a minute because last week on the first impressions, I um, talked about my probably my biggest and only downfall for me for this album is that track, which is again like a 55-ish second interlude. Um, but I think I really only have a problem with it when I'm listening to the album and I'm paying attention to it. 
because mm -hmm. when I'm paying attention to it and it comes on, it's like, okay, here's 55 seconds of just kind of, you know, ambient noise, music, whatever, before one of my favorite songs comes on. But when you're listening to the album just leisurely, or when it's on, whatever, you don't really notice Battle Him. It just kind of does its thing, does the build up, and then one shot of glory plays. So I think it's actually like perfectly situated on the album to the point where it does the job it's supposed to do exactly, unless you really, if you like focus on it, it might be annoying. But that's not the point. You're not supposed to be sitting there going, okay, what's next? Okay, this much time until my song comes. Like, you're not supposed to be sitting there doing that. Yeah, that's right? one thing so, I notice. Like, when it comes to when we do first impressions versus when we listen to things over the week, yeah. when we do our first impressions, we focus on the music pretty, I guess, more harshly than we would normally, yeah. right? So I think for songs like that, you know, they kind of, we kind of rip on them a little bit more than we end up doing when we review albums because, yeah. you know, we're, we're really focusing, like, oh, this is one minute of what? But then when you listen to it, I think it transitions great into that song, and I think it blends in really well with the album. I think like that's what you're getting at. Like exactly. I think yeah. you put it on, and it, it's not bothersome. It's just an extension of the song, and it's not too long. It's like under a minute, so I, yeah. I think it works out really well. I think so too. I think yeah, like when we listen to it intently, it would just it, you're able to be more critical. <laughs> right, you end up being more critical. Um, what about? I wanted to ask you about a song that this is a song for me when I first started listening to this album. That a song that had to grow on me, Leather Rebel. Leather Rebel. That's a that, that's one of the songs that like I liked and I really enjoyed. It wasn't like amazing, insane to me. Like it didn't pop out to me as much as Nightcrawler, Hammer the Anvil, or Touch of Evil. But I still enjoyed it. I thought it was a cool song. Like yeah. I don't think there's really any of the songs in this album that I can say, uh, wasn't really into it. Like everything was at a good, like at a standard of good or greater. Yeah, I don't. For me, Leather Rebel was one of those songs where. When I first heard it for the first couple of times, I, it, it was like one of those like, and this is the dud on the album. That's kind of how I felt. But then the more I kind of gave it a chance, I was like, these riffs are just fucking sick. They are good. And the double bass in this song is just on point. And again, the vocals are, are right there. Um, so that song rose up for me, like not exactly this week, but just over my years listening to this album, that's a, that's a song that really jumped up to me. One thing I want to talk about is track number two, Hell Patrol. Now last week, you know, the first track came on, it was an insane barrage of stuff, and then Hell Patrol came on, and I'm, I wasn't as into it because Painkiller just finished, right? Right. And not only is that a super insane song, yep. but as you mentioned, it's a song I'm very familiar with, and yep. then I went to Uncharted Territory. And that was one thing I had in my head when I was listening to the album over the course of the week. I thought, okay, you know, is this, am I still gonna feel that way? And the answer is no. I think Hell Patrol is a really cool song, and you know, I, there'd be points where I'd even just start with that song just to be like, okay, I'm just yeah. gonna put on Hell Patrol and get the impression of Hell Patrol, and I liked it a lot. Yeah. So it got to the point where even at the end of the week, I would start it from the top, listen to Painkiller, and then go to Hell Patrol and not feel like anything went down at all. I'd be like, yeah, exactly. this is still a strong song, vastly different from Painkiller, and I think it works out. Like, I, I enjoy that song a lot more now. Yeah, I think Hell Patrol is also another top song for me. I mean, there's a lot of songs, a lot of this album is top songs for me. Like, it's really hard to really <laughs> pick a favorite, but Hell Patrol, again, man, the vocals, I could talk about the vocals all day. The vibratos in his voice, nothing extreme, very subtle a lot of time, but they're just so perfect. And they add just such a cool element to the song. And they're not, he doesn't do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a nice sustained note, sometimes it's a vibrato. It just shows you the talent this man has. For sure. Now, there's one small thing I want to mention about Metal Meltdown, and that's during one of the verses, and I showed you this, like, right before we started. Oh, yeah. You know, he says, piercing lasers, and then in the background, you hear a guitar, doo, 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 yeah, like, like it's lasers. lasers. So that, like, that's, and it happens a few times in that song, like, after he yeah. says something, and I thought that was really cool. I also really like the call and answer in that song from Rob and the guitars. I thought that was sick. Yeah. I did mention that, like, I did write that down in my notes. Um, but I don't think I mentioned it last week. I don't think so, but that is a cool point to make. I like I like um, when people notice stuff like that, you know, because it's it's cool uh, music writing. So yeah, when they incorporate stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anyways, let's uh, rate Painkiller. I'll go first. Um, I think this album is one of the best metal albums of all time. Um, it's basically a, a flawless album. There's not much bad to say about it at all. It gets a toe tag for me easily. I picked it for a reason. Um, I think it's phenomenal. All right, so, um, you know, the title track blew me away when I first heard it, you know, some years ago. And honestly, I think the rest of the album holds up. 
to that track. I think this is a toe tag album for me as well. I can't really say any flaws about this album really. I can't say, oh, you know, the album's great, but there's this. So, like overall, super strong the entire way through. Like it's just a sick album. Honestly, I thought if you were gonna have a flaw about this album that I thought maybe you might find it a little dated because well, I think it holds up just fine, but you know, uh, the music we listen to typically is a lot more current, more fresh. I can this see. This is definitely older, old school sounding in a lot of ways. So I thought maybe that might've been a little flaw, maybe. Yeah, I can see for some people, if they really don't like the old school heavy metal sound, then I can see that. For myself, I mean, I do like that stuff. Yeah. So, you know. So it doesn't really apply to it, you. That, that doesn't really apply to me. Like, I, that stuff I do enjoy. Anyways, guys, that's it. Two toe tags for Painkiller. No really surprise there for me. Um, I'm glad you liked it. I think it was a good pick. I'm glad you picked it. Down in the comments below, we want you guys to let us know what you guys think of this album. I'm sure you guys love it too. And if you, guess what? If you haven't listened to Painkiller, you're missing out. You gotta give this album a chance. That's it for this video, guys. So like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Keep those heads back.